A very good evening, everyone, and welcome back to English Cafe. This is Mamta, and I'm back again with today's vocabulary live session at four. Please join me for this session, and we're going to learn about ten to fifteen new words and phrases from today's newspaper headlines, and we're going to discuss some world news. We're going to discuss the headlines. About the news across the world, so please join me for the session and let us learn together. Also, um, if you're joining us for the first time, let me tell you that we conduct this vocabulary live session at 4 p.m. Indian time every day, where we learn about five to ten advanced English words from newspaper headlines. You can join every day. You can join us live every day at 4 p.m. to learn new words in English. And if you've joined, please drop me a hi and tell me how you're doing. Which city are you joining in from? How is the weather there? Here in Noida, it's sunny today. How is the weather in your city? Please let me know. And uh, do say a hi in the comments if you joined. All right, a couple of you have already joined. Welcome to the session, guys. Abhishek says, "Good evening." Good evening, Abhishek. Thank you for joining the session. Abhishek, we are going to learn some new words from today's newspaper headlines, and we are going to discuss some world news. And it's the Hindu that uh, we are going to learn the words from. Um, so uh, please stay with me and learn these words. All right, um, Abhishek says, "I'm doing good." Great, great to hear that, Abhishek, and I'm doing good too. Good evening, Surendra. Thank you for joining. How are you? Rajendra says, "Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Rajendra. Thank you for joining the session." Let me tell you guys the words that I have today are very interesting words uh, and phrases actually, and we are discussing world news today. It's on page number thirteen in the Hindu. Um, so there's news from across the world. we will learn new words and phrases so oh so before we go ahead uh, let me ask you guys to share this can you take a moment and share this live session on your wall let's take a moment and share it let me also do that in the meanwhile and then we can come back and start the session Okay, so I hope you guys have shared it. If you have, give me a thumbs up, and if not, please go ahead and share. Rajiv says, "How are you doing?" I'm doing great, Rajender. How are you doing, Rajender? Please tell me. Okay, so let's get started with today's session and let's discuss our first uh, newspaper headline. Again, today is May. Like these days, the main headlines are about Afghanistan. So I hope you are familiar with what's going on in Afghanistan right now. and this headline that i'm going to read it says afghans race to flee taliban regime uh so we discussed the word regime the other day i hope you know the word uh first of all we will discuss the expression race to someone or race to something what does that mean so afghan people are racing to flee taliban right now Taliban regime actually so regime is a particular government right now Taliban governs Afghanistan so there is Taliban regime in Afghanistan and the afghans are in a race to flee the race to something a race to someone means to to move to run to drive in a very hurried and a frantic way and you can understand the afghan situation right now of course they are not they are not cool they are not calm at the moment they are worried they are frantic and they want to flee afghanistan as fast as possible the so race to something means to move towards it to run or to drive in a frantic way or in a very hurried way okay so that's what this headline is uh says it says that afghanistan's want to flee afghanistan sorry afghan people want to flee afghanistan as fast as possible 
because they definitely fear the Taliban regime. So I hope you know the word flee. To flee means to run away from a dangerous place. Or just to run away is also flee, but usually the word flee is used when you try to escape a dangerous situation or a harmful situation. So you know flee. That's why Afghan Afghan people are right now trying to flee Taliban regime. They're trying to get into different countries. So race to someone or race to something means to move uh, to move in a very fast way or in a worried way, in a frantic way, etc. Do let me know how you can use this in a sentence. Um, for example, when there is a when there is a natural disaster, people race to save their lives, right? Or if there is a uh, if there if there is a huge sale going on, people race to place their orders. Like if there is a, there an exclusive sale uh, on Amazon or on Flipkart, people race to place their orders because they don't want the stocks to last. Like they want to place their orders before the stocks last. So they race to place their orders. Can you let me know how you can use the expression race, race to do something in a sentence? Please let me know. And I'll see if I have any unread comments. I have one from Renu. Good evening, Renu. And thank you so much for joining the session. Do let me know how you will use this expression race to do something. I gave you a couple of examples. Now it's your turn to use it in the sentences. And if you are here watching this session, please participate. The only way you can grow your vocabulary is by using these words and expressions in sentences, using them in a context. If you can use one, like each word that you're learning right now, if you can use each word in a particular context, it would be great. There are there are more chances, like there are higher chances that you will retain this word for later and you will be able to use these words in your conversations in future. So please, please participate, write down the examples. At the maximum, you will make a mistake and I can share feedback with you. There's nothing to lose. The only thing you will have by participating is you will gain more confidence you will gain better understanding of how to use particular words or phrases. So let me know, race to flee. Um, Rajinder, sir, Rajinder says, um, when I saw the lion, I fled from there. Yes, so guys, flee is a verb. You can use it in all the forms. Flee is the first form. The second form is fled. Flee, F-L-W, flee. The second form is fled. And the third form is also fled, flee, fled, fled. Okay. Renu says the children fled away from the dangerous place. Great. Uh, Muzahid, hi, Muzahid. I'm great. How are you doing? Thank you for joining. Miss Akansha, good evening, Miss Akansha. Thank you for joining. Renu says I raced to catch the thief but failed. Wonderful example, Renu. Ashish says these days, students race to get government jobs. Great example, Ashish. Rajinder says, sheep flees from wolves. Yeah, sheep flee from wolves. That's true. Ms. Akancha says, what's that, Akancha? G, um, sorry, I can't read that. Um, please let me know what that means. So race to someone, race to something means to move in a, in a hurried way, in a frantic way like what's happening in Afghanistan right now. People are racing to flee the country. And, you know, the same, uh, same headline further. So actually, there were three words. If you did not know the word flee, you have learned that as well. To flee means to escape a dangerous or a harmful place. And the next word was regime. A regime is a particular government. Like right now, there is Taliban regime in Afghanistan. Now, the same headline further says, more than 80,000 people have been evacuated since August 14, but crowds remain outside airport. Um, we discussed the word evacuate, but I would just like to review it. If you attended previous sessions, you will know this word. To evacuate, can you tell me what does it mean? People are being evacuated from Afghanistan right now since Taliban took over. So to evacuate means to move someone from a dangerous place 
to uh, to somewhere safe, to a safer place. So that's evacuate. I hope you learned that word. Tell me how you're going to use the word evacuate in a sentence. It's a very simple and easy to use word. Please let me know how you're going to use it. So evacuate. I'll move on to another interesting uh, phrase that we're going to discuss. So this is about um, the visit of US Vice President, Ms. Kamala Harris. And it says, Kamala Harris reaches Hanoi after Havana syndrome delay. So um, you guys know who Kamala Harris is. If you don't know, let me tell you that she is the Vice President of the USA right now. And uh, she has reached Hanoi. Hanoi is the capital of Vietnam. Vietnam is a South Asian country. So she has reached Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam. But she got a little delayed. And why did she get delayed? She got delayed due to, due to a couple of cases of Havana syndrome. Do you know what Havana syndrome is? I absolutely didn't know before this, before I read this. I don't know it quite right yet, but in my understanding, um, what happened was that, um, so what, what has happened is that the US diplomats placed in various countries uh, have faced issues where, uh, you no, know, they face certain medical issues which were uh, you know which were allegedly um, caused by using some what is it um, some high frequency waves so uh, it says it said that you know countries like cuba and other nations uh, used these high frequency waves on the diplomats which caused uh, uh, which caused brain damage which caused a medical condition in these people and uh, the earliest case of Havana syndrome was detected in 2016. That's why it, what I read on Wikipedia this morning. And the first case of Havana syndrome was detected in Cuba. So Cuba is a, is a South American nation, as you know. So that's Havana syndrome. When uh, it is not uh, like it is not uh, legally declared uh, yet, um, it's not accepted like we have accepted COVID-19 as a pandemic not in that way but they're still talking about it that what has happened to their diplomats is when they were posted in different countries uh, they experienced sudden mental issues sudden medical issues uh, where uh, uh, they it caused them brain damage and us suspects that the brain damage was caused due to some um, high frequency waves high high radiation waves that were used on their diplomats especially the officers of CIA and all. So that's Havana syndrome. And recently, recently, um, there were two officials, two US officials in, um, in Hanoi who were diagnosed with Havana syndrome and they were sent back to their country. So they were evacuated because uh, evacuated, as you know, evacuated means they were sent back to a safe place. So that's Havana syndrome. I don't know much, but if you know about it, please let me know. I just read about it today. So that's what Havana syndrome is. So she got delayed because there were these two cases and then those two officials have to be evacuated. So she got a little delayed, but she has reached Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam. And the same headline further says, China slams US for bid to intimidate nations in the region. So now there's a comment from China and China has slammed the US. You know the word slam, S-L-A-M? To slam means to criticize. So it keeps happening, right? China criticizes US, US criticizes Russia, like that, it keeps happening. Politicians slam each other for the remarks they make, for the decisions the other politicians make. So China slams US means China has criticized the US. Uh, and uh, according to China, they are trying to intimidate the region. The, according to China, the US is trying to intimidate the region. I would like you to tell me what the word intimidate means. Can you tell me what does it mean, intimidate? I hope you've heard this word before. According to China, US is trying to intimidate our South Asian region. Region means we, they're talking about the South Asian region. 
all the countries, all the nations in the region. So what does the word intimidate, intimidate mean? Please tell me. And I'll see if I have any um, comments to read. Um, OK. We shouldn't race to earn money. Or what do you want to say, Renu? We shouldn't race to earn money. Maybe that's what you're trying to say. Uh, or we shouldn't race to make more money, make a lot of money like that. Abhishek says, I race to wake up early. OK, good. Um, Renu says, in Modi regime, there are many development works that have been done. OK, great example. Abhishek says, people are being evacuated from Afghanistan. Right, Abhishek, great example. Muzahid says, ma'am, I want to learn international BPO skills. So does your institute provide it? We can help you with that, Muzahid. Please get in touch with us. We offer courses to help you improve your English your fluency, pronunciation, vocabulary, et cetera. So get in touch with us for that, please. Uh, Shahala Parvi. Hi, Shahala. Thank you for joining. Rajinder says, despite of the international polit internal politics, Indian government focused on evacuation mission of Afghanis Afghans. Afghanistanis are Afghans, Rajinder, OK? And uh, Despite despite the, you don't need to say despite of the, just say despite the internal politics. Renu says, in tsunami, many tourists had to evacuate Andaman Island. Yeah, great example, Renu. Rajinder says, fear. Uh, intimidate is, intimidate is related to fear, Rajinder, right? Renu says, she got Havana syndrome, so her behavior was not normal. Yeah, because uh, Havana syndrome causes brain damage, they say. So here, let's discuss the word intimidate. To intimidate somebody means to, to use uh, fear, to try to scare that person in order to make them do something. So that's to intimidate someone. And this is what... China is accusing US of, they say that they are trying to intimidate by re the region by trying to, by trying to, you know, now bring back their influence. First, they withdrew from Afghanistan and now they're coming back and talking about relationships with South Asian nations. Uh, they are trying to intimidate us. They're trying to scare us. They're trying to, uh, yeah, so they're trying to scare us so that they can control us or they can get things done from us, so that is intimidate. Some people have very intimidating personality. So if somebody has an intimidating personality, that means you know they come across as bossy. They, they could be bossy, they could be, uh, they could be bullies. So bullies have intimidating personalities where you know, they will scare you to do things for them. So intimidate, that's what it means. And intimidate is a verb. So you can use it in uh, different forms, intimidate, intimidated, intimidating, etc. You can use it in all the forms. Let me know how you're going to use the word intimidate in a sentence of your own, how you can use it. Please let me know. And now, please write the sentences and I'll move on and talk about another headline that we have today. It's, it's about Russia and China. And uh, it's about Afghanistan, actually. So this, uh, this headline says, Putin and Xi agree to jointly combat threats. So you can see this. It says, Putin, Xi agree to jointly combat threats. Let's first discuss the word combat. What does the word combat mean? Do you know this word? I'm sure you've heard this word, combat. Please let me know in the comments what it means. And the same article further says, efforts to be made to combat terrorism as well as drug trafficking in the region. So you got to tell me what does combat mean? And also tell me what does trafficking or what does drug trafficking mean? Please let me know in the comments if you've heard these words before. And let me see if I have any unread comments. Okay. Um, oh, so Ehsan has joined. Hi, Ehsan. Thank you for joining. Welcome to the session. Rajendra says, torrential rains intimidate the capital. Absolutely. Yeah. Great use, Rajendra. Um, Renu says, Congress leader slammed demonetization. Wonderful example. Rajendra says, office bullies are often intimidate. Okay. Office bullies often intimidate their superiors 
oh so bullies do bullies intimidate superiors or are the bullies intimidated by superiors i'm not clear on that abhishek says many fake news intimidate us absolutely they cause fear in us um okay combat is struggle or battle yeah combat is battle absolutely combat means war yeah so to combat mushahid says um, muzaid says combat means war yeah combat means to fight to fight in a war uh, but here here we are talking about combating drug trafficking or combating terror threats so these countries china and russia are, talk, are talking about combating terror threats from afghanistan or combating drug trafficking that can happen now due to taliban regime in afghanistan so what does that mean absolutely combat means to fight but to combat something also means to try to control something bad or something dangerous or something harmful or to try to stop its spread so here here the meaning of combat is to try to um, to try to stop it for example combat drug trafficking that means we have to work together to stop the spread of drug trafficking or for example how to combat covid-19 the entire world right now is combating covid-19 together so to combat means we are trying to stop it or uh, uh, how can we combat a disease or combat poverty for example uh, or combat inflation like in our country we have been talking about combating inflation because inflation had been on the rise so to combat means to try to control it to try to stop it from increasing that's combat give me some examples of the word combat like i said combat combat covid-19 or combat poverty or combat inflation combat trafficking you can use it in any of these expressions please let me know how you're going to use it in a sentence and also let me know what do you mean by drug trafficking what is trafficking we all know the word traffic but what is trafficking please let me know all right um i have some unread comments so i'll read those rajendra says india combat to defeat england um yeah we can say that but not a very appropriate example you can think of another example rajendra vandana thank you for joining vandana rajendra says world combat yeah the world right now is combating corona absolutely um muzahid says trafficking means do illegal works by the peddlers like we often hear about child or women trafficking absolutely muzahid um uh, that's what trafficking is actually trafficking means to trade something illegally so anything that we are trading without the uh, without the permission of the law is trafficking like drug trafficking human trafficking all these words all these terms that we hear so if humans are sold or bought it's not legal you can't sell a human life but it happens so that's human trafficking or uh, drug trafficking like in many countries and many drugs are illegal they are not allowed so but they are still sold and bought so that's drug trafficking and trafficking is um, is a huge issue for the nations to combat and that's what they're talking about uh, okay some more uh, comments renu says india is ready to combat nexalites great example vandana says please repeat all words again ma'am absolutely vandana at the end we're going to review all the words again so please stay with me until the end ehsan says combating poverty should be priority number 1 absolutely for any government abhishek says many countries should work together to combat the taliban not the afghanis but the taliban abhishek let's combat taliban renu says increasing of corona patients intimidates us wonderful example absolutely mozaid says combat unemployment right rajendra says we have to combat with antisocial activities right 
Renu says he was caught in girl trafficking by police, right? So that's trafficking. Yeah, please use the word trafficking in a sentence. So you know the word trafficking now. Any Anything that's being traded illegally is trafficking, like human trafficking, drug trafficking, etc. Now let's move on to another headline. It's about Philippines. There's a lot in today's world news. So it's about Philippines and it says Philippines Duterte confirms he will run for vice president. So um, Rodrigo, what is it, his name? Rodrigo Duterte is the current president of the Philippines and he has confirmed that he's going to run for vice president. He has actually, he will already complete his six year term as the president of the Philippines. And according to the Philippine, like Philippines law, you cannot, uh, you cannot hold the same position twice. Like he cannot be the president once again. He can only be a, the president once for six years. But since he would like to retain in power, he would like to remain in power, he will run for vice president. So to run for an office. If somebody is running for an office, that means they are, uh, you know, they are contesting elections to hold that position. Like here, we say that Duterte will run for vice president. So here he is not physically running, but it means he is going to contest the elections to become the next vice president of the Philippines. Now, please tell me how you're going to use the expression to run for an office. There are another, there are another expressions that can be used with run for, like run for your life. You have to run for your life means you have to run to save your life. But to run for an office means to contest elections so that you can hold that position if you win. Tell me how uh, you're going to use the expression run for in a sentence in the comments. Did you, did you ever run for any office? Like, did you ever run for uh, any election campaign or did you ever run for an MLA election? Please let me know how you're going to use this. Okay, uh, oh, a lot of unread comments. Tashin, hi Tashin. Tashin says drug trafficking is becoming very common day by day, great example. Vandana says humans organs trafficking is a big problem of India. It's it, okay, great example. Abhishek says, I was confused. Uh, so I hope it's clear now, <laughs> that's okay Abhishek. <laughs> yeah, Renu says, in, oh, thank you for correcting. Uh, great that you got it Abhishek. Rajinder says, bootlegging is trafficking. Okay, yeah. So do you guys know what bootlegging is? Uh, Rajinder just used the word bootlegging. Please let us know what bootlegging is. But as far as I understand is it bootlegging is piracy. Like when you uh, watch pirated content on internet, pirated films, pirated TV shows, uh, you download them from torrent and other websites, that's bootlegging. Asan says restrictions for illegal trafficking must be intensified. Great example, Asan. Rajinder says Rahul Gandhi will run for president. Okay, will run for prime minister maybe. Renu, Renu says, Mr. L.K. Advani ran for the prime minister, but he failed. Oh, did he? Renu says, we shouldn't run for making money, making more money. Yeah, thank you for correcting that. So it was to run for an office. To run for an office means to, um, to contest the elections, to fight the election so that you can hold that position. Now, that was about the Philippines and what's happening there. Let's move on and let's talk about another news. It's about the US and it says, US top court reinstates remain in Mexico policy. So earlier, um, when there was uh, Donald Trump government in the US, um, so he, he formed this remain in Mexico policy, which actually, um, which actually forced the illegal immigrants to stay in Mexico until everything was verified. Um, 
and these could be immigrants for any from anywhere not just mexicans but any other immigrants who were trying to enter us through mexico uh, they had to remain in mexico until the documentation and verification and everything was cleared so when uh, when joe biden came into power he um, you know he tried to bring it, bring in more friendly policies but the supreme court in the us has now reinstated the remain in mexico policy so to reinstate something means to give somebody their position again or to implement a law again like a law that was made but it was not being used or not being implemented for some time but the government decides or the court decides to implement it again so to implement a law back again is reinstate a law or reinstate a policy because this policy biden government wanted to dissolve it but the supreme court in the us said that you know we will we will reinstate it that means we will continue using remain in mexico policy which means people who are trying to enter us um, illegally will have to remain in mexico until the verification documentation etc etc takes place so reinstate to reinstate means to apply back a law or to put a uh, put a law back in uh, back in implementation after discontinuing it for some time that's reinstate and the same headline further says supreme court's decision deals a blow to biden now i would like to discuss the expression to deal a blow you can see this expression on your screen deal a blow so if something deals a blow to someone what happens please tell me please take a look and tell me what happens so as you can see that as we said that biden tried to be friendly with other nations but the us supreme court has now dealt a blow to biden so to deal a blow to someone means to uh, to do something that shocks them or that harms them etc so here the decision of the supreme court has shocked biden of course it must have shocked like because he tried to work the other way but the supreme court thinks the other way so he was shocked so to deal a blow to someone means to cause a shock or to cause some harm for example uh, yeah for us indians when we heard about the when we heard about the passing away of sushant singh rajput last year when we heard about his suicide it dealt a blow to to the entire nation like not just to the people who watch films and who liked sushant singh rajput uh, the news of his suicide dealt a blow to the entire country do you agree with me did the news of his suicide kind of dealt a blow to the entire country did you feel shaken or um, you know did you did you feel uh, threatened by this uh, by that news please let me know in the comments and also let me know how you're going to use the expression to deal a blow since deal is a verb you can use it in all the forms like deal a blow dealt a blow etc do let me know how you can use these two words reinstate were there any laws that were reinstated in our country recently please let me know and uh, also use the expression deal a blow in a sentence i'm moving on and reading another headline for you it's about the search for covid-19 origins so it says search for covid-19 origins stalled you know the word origin i guess origin is where something starts from that's its origin right so the scientists the researchers were trying to search for the origins of covid-19 but now it has stalled s t a l l e d so what does the word stalled means it's if something is stalled that means please tell me 
you should you should try to figure it out from the headline and tell me what it means and let me see if i have any unread comments until i get your comment about the word stall um okay abhishek says child trafficking is very common in india oh that's sad Asan says, for an honest person, running for office is really nearly impossible. Uh, that, that's what most people feel like, Asan, right? Renu says, Modi reinstated many economic reforms, ideas of Manmohan Singh. Great example. Okay. Um, thank, thank you, Clash. Hi, hi. Thank you for joining us. Rajinder says, untimed demise of my grandfather dealt a blow for my family great example great yeah guys what a nice example from rajinder how are you going to use the word or the expression deal a blow in a sentence please let me know and also let me know what does the word stalled means let's talk about it if something is stalled that means its progress has stopped. Stalled means stopped. Now it's not working any longer. So here the search for COVID-19, the search for the origins of COVID-19 has stalled. That means we are not making any progress now. It's stopped. And the same headline further says that WHO experts warn the window of opportunity to solve mystery is closing fast. So this comment has come from the WHO experts. You know WHO, the World Health Organization. In the last one year, we have heard and talked a lot about WHO. So we know, we know this organization now. So they're saying, they've said that the window of opportunity is closing now. I would like to discuss the term window of opportunity with you what does it mean they're saying that the window of opportunity closes now we will not be able to find the origins of covid 19. so they were trying to find how it originated um, you know did it uh, did it transfer from animals to humans or was it a leak from a laboratory they were trying to find the origins but who says that uh, now the window of opportunity is closing. So what does it mean, window of opportunity? Please tell me in the comments. Let me see if I have any unread comments. Oh, I have a hello from Shalu. Hi, Shalu. Good evening and thank you for joining. Tashin says his premature death dealt me a blow. Yeah, great example. Vandana says after hearing about demonetization, we were dealt with a blow. Great, great example, Vandana. Yes, that's how you can use deal a blow in a sentence. Please keep commenting and sharing your sentences. And here, the next word we discussed, the next expression we discussed was window of opportunity. What does that mean? The window of opportunity to find COVID-19 origins is now going to close. WHO says this. So let's talk about window of opportunity. Window of opportunity means when we say if, you know, if there's a window of opportunity for something, we mean to say that there is opportunity, but to avail that opportunity, we have limited time. The opportunity is not going to remain there forever. The opportunity is going to end because it has come with a limited time. So window of opportunity. Okay. So you should make the most of your window of opportunity until it lasts. Right. Or um, um, I would like to, uh, I would like to give it my best until I have the window of opportunity to clear UPSC exams. Like UPSC exams also come with a window of opportunity. You can't, you can't keep appearing for the exams your lifetime. So there's a certain window of opportunity if you want to get into civil services. Uh, everything has a window of opportunity, in fact, right? Please let me know how you can use the expression window of opportunity in a sentence that you're going to speak. Let me know in the comments, guys. Um, Rajinder says, 
Once probe is over about something, speculations stalled. Yeah, that's what happens, right? Renu says, in Corona time, his both of the parents hospitalized and the serious situation. And in that serious situation, he dealt, oh, dealt him a blow. Yeah, great example, Renu. Now tell me how you guys are going to use the word, the expression, window of opportunity in a sentence. Please let me know. And I will please keep writing the comments. Let me know how you're going to use this. Until then, I will read the last headline for the day. It's between, it's a news about Algeria and Morocco. So it says, Algeria cuts diplomatic ties with hostile Morocco. So these are two countries, Algeria and Morocco. So now Algeria has cut its ties, cuts its diplomatic ties with Morocco. They're calling Morocco hostile. Diplomatic, I hope you know the word di diplomatic. Diplomatic means um, the relationships between the two countries, right? What happens between the two countries is diplomatic. If somebody, if somebody speaks diplomatically, that means they speak very nicely uh, without intending to hurt anybody. That's diplomatically. If we say he talks very diplomatic or you don't need to be diplomatic here, uh, you know, just, uh, just be candid. So diplomatic can mean speak or communicate in a way that's nice and that doesn't offend. And diplomatic means between the two countries or between different countries. So Algeria says that we are going to cut all ties. What does it mean when we say to cut ties with someone or to cut ties with something? What does that mean? They're going to cut all their ties with Morocco because now they have concluded that Morocco is hostile. What does the word hostile mean? Tell me these two words, cut ties and hostile. What do they mean? Please let me know. And let me see if I have any comments that I have not read yet. Um, Abhishek says, every special offer has a window of opportunity. Absolutely, Abhishek. Great example. Belam Hill Mohammed. I'm from Algeria. Oh, hi, Belam Hill. So what's going on in Algeria? What's going on between you and Morocco? Please tell me. Renu says, um, he got a good job in a multinational company, and this was a window of opportunity for him. Great. Rajinder says, life has different window of opportunities at different levels. So philosophical, good. Uh, Tashin says, break the relationship, right. To cut ties, to cut ties means someone means to break your relationship, breaking up all the relationship with someone, right, Vandana? And hostile means not friendly. If someone is hostile to you, that means they are not friendly to you. In fact, they do things so that you just don't fit in. You just don't, uh, you know, survive in that environment. So that's hostile. And cut ties. Cut ties means to, uh, to end all your relationships with that person, with that country like that. So do use here, this says that Algeria is going to cut all the diplomatic ties with Morocco because they have concluded that Morocco is a hostile nation. They are hostile, they're not friendly to them. How are you going to use these two words? Um, for example, some workplaces are hostile. They offer a very hostile work environment where you know, it's not, it's not nice for you to survive and grow. Hostile. Some people can be hostile to you for no reason. Do use the word hostile and also cut ties. Again, cut is a verb, so you can use it in all the forms. And cut is same, remains the same in all the forms. Cut, cut, cut. Present, past, past participle. All the forms are cut. So use this in a sentence, cut ties. Did you ever cut ties with anyone because of a reason because of any reason because they were 
not respectful because they were hostile etc please let me know in the comments and let me see if i have any unread comments hostile means wild okay tashin hostile means not friendly um vandana says cut ties means breaking up yeah i read that rajinder says china always maintains a hostile relationship with india right that's what we say here renu says his son cut ties with him great example tanya you've joined now good evening thank you for joining but you're a little late tanya please join us at 4 pm we come live sharp 4 okay so guys keep commenting your examples we will quickly go through all the words that we learned today we learned some really nice words and expressions let's quickly review them the first one that we learned today was race to someone or race to something that means to to walk to run or to move in a in a in a hurried way or uh, in a frantic way because you're worried or stressed etc the next word was evacuate evacuate means to move someone from a dangerous place to somewhere safe next word was havana syndrome so havana syndrome as alleged by us and some other nations havana syndrome is a medical condition uh, which causes brain damage and it's allegedly caused by using some high frequency sonic waves etc the next word was slam to slam someone means to criticize that person the next one was intimidate to intimidate means to scare the person to make them do something and uh, the next word was combat to combat means to fight like a battle but to combat something also means to try to stop it or to try to stop its spread like to combat terrorism next one was trafficking trafficking is illegal trade of anything like human trafficking drug trafficking etc the next word was to run for run for an office to run for an office means to contest elections so that you can hold that position if you win the next word was to reinstate to reinstate a law means to put the law into effect again so that's reinstate the next uh, expression was to deal a blow to deal a blow means uh, to cause a shock or surprise etc the next one was stalled s t a w l e d so if something is stalled that means its progress is stopped the next expression was window of opportunity a window of opportunity is the time period in which the opportunity lasts after that the opportunity will be gone the next one was diplomatic diplomatic means um to communicate in a friendly way diplomatic means the relationships between two or more nations between two nations and the last one was to cut ties to cut ties means to end all your relationships or end your relationship with that person and yeah there was one more word which was hostile the so hostile means not friendly in fact threatening so somebody who is not friendly you can call them hostile so guys these were the words and expressions that we learned today i hope you enjoyed the session and at the same time i hope that you learned some new words and expressions please let me know in the comments what are some new words that you learned today um during this session and uh, was i able to explain these words clearly to you please let me know in the comments and if you joined us for the first time today let me tell you that um, we conduct this live session at 4 pm indian time every day so you can join us and in this session we discuss vocabulary from newspaper headlines so you can learn about 5 to 10 new words from the daily newspaper headlines and these are advanced english words and uh, the words can be very beneficial for you when you talk or you express your views about the world or when you communicate in english so do join us and learn at least 5 to 10 new words every day and uh, 
yeah and if um, you know if you would like to practice speaking in english if you would like to develop fluency in english we offer online courses for that so you can join an online course with us and practice from anywhere um, you can practice in a group class or you can practice one on one with a trainer here at english cafe to uh, to actually build fluency and confidence and accuracy when you communicate in english um so if that's something you're looking for do get in touch with us and uh, before i go let me see if i have any unread comments i'll just read those comments and then we'll end this session oh all right a lot of comments to read uh, renu says he got a good job in multinational company and this was a window of opportunity for him okay i had read that um okay rajender says uh, china always maintains a hostile relationship with india all right good one uh, let's move on Tashin says her hostile behavior made me very upset. Wonderful example, yeah. Renu says in the party he became hostile. Yeah, some people behave that way. Rajender says we should not cut ties with our well wishers. Great example again, Rajender. Um, okay, Subhajit says we should slam our government. Oh, okay. Uh, Abhishek says we should cut ties with the bad people. Absolutely. Uh, Subhajit says my admission is. stalled due to rajender says he um, okay so he made a list of the words that we discussed intimidate combat absolutely all the words great job rajender renu says our leaders solved this problem diplomatically yeah great example the situation is very hostile for me okay shubhajit where do you live where is it hostile abhishek says some of the countries are hostile with other countries absolutely Rajendra says Shashi Tharoor is a good diplomat. That's right. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much guys for staying with me until the end of this session. Do let me know how you like this session. Give me your feedback in the comments. I'm going to read all the feed all the comments after the session is over and I'm going to respond to you. So do let me know how you like the session and yes, please don't forget to share this session. Please share it. with the, the people you know please share it on your wall um, with your friends however you can please share so that they can also learn and that's all from me for today's session i'll wait for your feedback on how you like the session i'm going to see you guys tomorrow with another vocabulary session so please join me tomorrow at 4 pm until then please take care of yourselves and keep learning have a wonderful evening everyone